Welcome guys in this uh, second video on the map puzzle system. So in the previous video we created our map puzzle class and uh, we started writing some uh, lines of code in it. We created our uh, tile set puzzle. So the method that we're actually going to be puzzling tile sets. So um, I think it's important for you to go back and check that out because if you haven't done that it doesn't make sense at all. So um, in this video we're gonna be moving forward with that and uh, add more functionalities like the pass layer, pass the tile layer and we're gonna be you know uh, if we have time for that um, drawing that on the screen at the end of the video if we make it so I hope so I don't want to make videos too long and uh, yeah but before we get started I want to mention something that you probably uh, faced I can like a problem the way we initialize our um, uh, tile set list if you remember right here so instead of writing it here inside like this equal to tile set if you write it like this it won't work because this operator is a little bit um, doesn't match when you try to write this value inside of this because this is like a vector and it doesn't make sense to um, assign the value like that. That's why uh, I use this way right here. You put this two point right here and we initialize this like this. So make sure you do it because if you don't you will have a lot of problem coming up. So um, but still if you have question and concern just write me in the comment section below and um, yeah think about to hit that subscribe button and yeah you definitely want to go out and check if you want to support me on patreon or you know whatever so we go back to our map puzzle this is the method that we created the path style set that we created so now we're gonna be uh, creating the, the path style layer which is here down here so I want to work on that right now so let me set up my I'm gonna remove this and make sure I have enough space to see so this is going to be a little bit heavy and um, I mean not a little bit complicated but I think you guys can handle that it's it's not a lot of lines of code but uh, it takes um, a lot of uh, thinking to really get what is going on here and now I think I'm going to try the best I can so that you guys can actually get what I mean now we're going to be starting by creating let me show you first how um, the layer looks like because we need to know how the layer looks like so if you open your map on your computer which you created before this is a layer for example this right here oh I'm sorry I'm trying to grab this I'm not grabbing this so this is a layer right here and a layer has important thing like name and the width and the height it's actually the number of columns you know, of tile that we have right here and 20 is the number of uh, rows that we have but we have this data right here which is what we're actually trying to be parsing we want to get this in our program we want to be able to convert this in our two-dimensional tile map if you remember when we created the tile layer we had this two-dimensional um, array this matrix called tile map is actually going to be taking those values right here so we're going to be creating like a string streaming so you, if you guys have, our, um, have, have ever programmed in C or in C++ whatever there's this concept of file streaming where we actually get we actually read data from the file so we're actually going to be passing this as a string and use that string as a source to pass our matrix so that's what we're going to be doing so in order for us to do that we now first of all need to create a XML element so element we're gonna be calling it data because we want to get the data if you remember data so and uh, we're going to be creating a loop for now and make sure we select the right element because now we create this element but we want to get that element which is inside of that of that map right here we're going to be using a loop to loop through that through that layer and get the data that's the idea now we simply say for TIXML element 
or call it e like element equal to xml so you know the layer right here we start by this element right is equal to this for this element simply say first child we want to guess the first child because um first child element not first child first child element the data is the first child if you see in your map right here sorry what am I so if you see in your map right here the data is the first child it's a CS it's um yeah this big matrix with stuff you see first child and let me make sure it's everything and yeah if that element is different from the null pointer so if we if we were able to get that element right so we simply say it's equal to e next sibling element. so this is like a loop but we only have one component but we want to make sure that we take the component that we're looking for that's why we need to check right here Is the name of that component which we're actually on right now equal to data? Then we take that element and put it in data that we declared before. So we're actually trying to get the right, make sure that we get the data, that element called data. That's why we make this loop right here. Because it can happen that we have more than one child component inside of that layer. That's why we want to make, so, make sure we select the right one. And we search for the data and put it inside of this variable now it goes we are sure that we have the data and when we find it we just break because there can be two data in a map there is only one so that's why when we find it we just break now the first thing we want to do is to get some important information about that first of all we want to get the matrix the matrix i showed you before and we get that we get that matrix actually as a string using this function right here get text so we define this string called matrix and we say data get text so the whole matrix right here is going to be giving to that matrix guy which is like a text it's just a string actually no big text and now we're going to be defining that matrix right here as a input string stream so i've been talking about file streaming so we're talking about string streaming weird I know it's like weird stuff so now we have this ID which is which is the, the actual value of the tile on this map so it could be this one here or this one right here we have that variable that we're gonna be converting it into an integer to put it in our tile map that we created before so this is how we're gonna be doing it we need to create that tile map first so we have this done we say tile map since we already included tile layer we have tile map also included we have tile map and we say tile map we want to define the size of that tile map so we have um, row count std vector integer and we want to define this don't have to be here yeah. so we want to define like um, the call count call count so what we're actually doing here is we're creating an array which has a, a matrix a two-dimensional array with the first size is this one it has um, this number of rows and this number of count and we initialize all values with zero that's the id behind this we need to add another parenthesis here so this is like a two-dimensional vector which is going to be later added into our tile layer that's why we needed to de define this and we initialized it now we need a for loop in order for us to run inside of that uh, stream string streaming whatever so we say in row it's equal to row count we say 
std uh, we say in row smaller than we start by zero we don't want to start by row count we start by zero so we say row equal to row count we simply want to increment this since this is going to be a two-dimensional matrix we need another loop which is going to be for columns so i'm just going to copy this and paste it right here changes to call also call int i don't forget to say call count right here call count so open the guy now we're going to be getting each element of the of this string right here that we create that we created we're going to be getting an uh, element from that and it's important for us to make sure we always get uh, the right component and we check if that component is actually an integer we try to pass it and we put it inside of that of the time map that we created up here so that's why we need to call the get line get line function which is going to be taking our input stream that we created here we want to get line from that it could have been a file so we're taking this from that uh, string up there and we also need a separator which is going to be a comma because if you see our map right here all values are separated with a comma so that's why we want to make sure that every time when we find a comma we want to take the value before that and kind of put it inside of this guy so we, we read from this file streaming and we put it inside of this guy every time we make this comma we take the value put it inside here now that we have the value we want to convert that into integer and put it inside the map so there is a there's actually a nice way uh, to achieve that so we have this string string up uh, string stream and we have the converter which actually take the ID and convert it so we simply say now converter we're trying to write it inside of our tail map so tile map write it on the row or So now we we're reading this and we also want to check okay if we're still good that mean, which mean uh, if we we haven't reached the end of this file if we're still going on that's important for us to check so if we're not good we break we stop if we reach the end we just simply break we want to do this like this so and after that what we can simply do is to create that tip that style layer, that tile layer and return it so we're gonna say return new tile layer and he's gonna be taking the first parameter was tile size that we have um, this tile size this parameter up here we have the tile size which is given and uh, the next no here the next parameter is going to be this. the next parameter is the, um, the the row count so we have row count yeah and the next one is going to be our count and yeah we have our tile map that we just created and we also need to pass the till sets which is up here this parameter now we we just passed the layer that's actually what we, we've done right here now we're going to be moving forward and create our pass function that pass guy is the guy who called this function for example we have more than one uh, map right here so he's going to be calling this function every time we find a new layer in our xml file and then pass it that's why it's important for us to create that that function right now so um, first of all I want to remove this guy don't need to have it right here it's a simple getter so we can deal with that here by just adding like 
return and map deck. So don't need that anymore. Now we have this plain function that we also want to put down because we're gonna be writing things in there, but now we'll put it later. So now our pass function. So the first thing we want to do is to create an XML document because if you see this is the guy who take takes the the source the XML file. So we want to create like an XML document and check if that if that file is correctly opened. So this is how we do it. We have this tiny XML document that we created and we try to load it. So when we load a file, we need to make sure the file was correctly loaded because if anything occurs then we want to make sure to know why that it didn't because sometimes happen that the file name wasn't correct or maybe you forgot something so it's important to check and if that happened we simply return false and no we create the problem but if everything was perfect then we need to get the root element the root element is the first element of the xml file so let me oh i'm sorry what happened here Close this. The one. So let me open that other file right here. So the root element is this guy map. So in in our case, the root element is map. So that's why it's important. It's the first element that we have in the XML file. Now we want to define some component that are going to be important. Since we're going to be passing the value of row count and um, call count, we need to define them and we will pass them from this guy. You can see right here we have them. We have width and height. So I didn't want to use width and height because when I say row count, I, I get more what I'm talking about. So that's supposed to do it like that. So I'm going to define it right here and I'm going to say. Uh, row count and um, all count and tile size also is important. So, shall I not with zero? And we want to get that from the root element because we need that. We want to get that from the root element. So and we simply get that from the root element. So the width is for the call count. Make sure you put that correct value there. And the height is for row count. And tile size is tile width. Because we have tile width and tile height. Actually, we don't want to deal with um, different size tile, uh, tile because it can happen that you want to build something which has different height and width like uh, 32 by 16 doesn't make sense nobody want to do something like that but well we just keep this now we get those values and later we'll pass those values to this pass layer and we we'll simply use that to pass our layer the next step now is to pass all till sets so if you remember we didn't create um, just a till set for our till layer right here let me go to the header file but instead we had a till set list we want to pass all those components because it it will always happen that I said always because I know it will that when you draw a map you use more than one tile set so that's why we need to pass all of them and for that we need a loop so we create a tile set component right here and we create a loop and we simply run through all the tile set that we have right here we have this first one and this second one it will often happen that you have like 10 tile sets and you will need to pass all of them in your project so that's what is going on right here we just start by the first child and we increment every time to the next element and we make sure that the component we're checking right now is a tile set because if you see our root element actually has layers and tile set. If we don't make sure it is a tile set, then we will run through some issue. So that's why we check if it is a tile set and we just push it in the list that we created here. So we just push it and that's it for the tile set. And the same thing has to be done for layers. So 
and the, you guys can simply pause and copy the code so I don't want to write this because I want to focus more on explaining you what is going on instead of writing it so now we create a game map right here we create a map and you know in our case we have two layers and we want to pass the layers to this map in this map right here that's why we start first child we make sure the element is a layer and yeah we create a tile layer right here and we call the pass function you see up here we call the pass uh, tile set and we pass this element to it because it was an XML element he took an XML element and pass here where am I yeah this one it he actually take the XML element and he pass it and the same thing is done for the layer right here we call the pass layer we pass this layer element right here and if you remember we have this tail set that we just pass up that we that we pass because um let me go ahead and show you this element is right here that we created we want to pass the list that we just pass up here and we pass it to this function the tile size was calculated before and uh, we want to make sure we change this to um row count make sure row count and call count and after we've done that we just push that map to our map we just push that layer to our game map easily and that's how we can pass the map and at the end right here we need to add that to our list to our dictionary map so we say map dates and we say id the id giving up here gonna be used to edit simply say game map and we return go so this is basically how we can uh, pass uh, these things now that was the first time the first uh, part of this we, we could we were able to pass this but we still need to draw it on the screen which is another huge work so I think it's better for us to stop right now. Let me try to compile this and make sure we don't have a problem. Yeah. Um, and predict what is going on. Ah, to get a map, we need ID STD string ID, and we just pass the ID right here to make sure we return the right map that we're looking for. Tile set list. Let's see why containing because we have does it say tile set was not declared in this scope where are you we are so tile sets let me check where are they so I also want to mention some things um, because I know you guys will face this struggle right here you see the map layers variable right here is a private variable so how can I access this when it's private that's why I add this go to the map to game map you see I have friend class so the friend class tag actually gives uh, access this class would actually have access to the private component of the map since the map puzzle will, al will always pop map I think it makes sense for us to simply edit right here and simply access this so just write this friend class right here and also make sure uh, you correct because I did have layer right here layers so make sure you put map layers and yeah just compile it and see if you have any issue I think everything should be straightforward and uh, yeah I think that's all so if we compile this Nothing should actually do. We shouldn't have any complaints. So that's important for us because we don't want to, you know, go forward when we have uh, things left behind. I hope everything is correct right now. We're gonna be um, drawing that on the screen in the next video. Yeah, as I said, this is a little bit heavy, but if you guys, if it didn't work for you, you can simply go out and download the source code in the description below. So I'll make sure it's working. And uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Think about to support me on Patreon and subscribe. Ciao.